my purpose to make this channel was to share with you things that have helped me on my art journey. And today, I think I think what I'm sharing today will help you on yours because it's something that uh, I'm experiencing firsthand currently, and I, I just want to share it with you. And it was reinforced by a uh, an artist that was invited to Plein Air South. His name is David Boyd Jr. And I'll put some of his work up here. I'll get permission. I don't think he'll care that I share his work because I'm just, it was such a joy to hear him talk and to see his work. And one of the things that really rang true with me is when he was giving his talk um, to a group of artists at the Plein Air South, it's when art, invited artists come in to teach. He was talking about when he used to do his traditional plein air painting and he would haul his oils and go out painting with his friends and they would find a location and they might stay there two to three hours and they might, they'll each have a different painting, but they will have just been in that one location for that amount of time. And then he started still going with his plein air friends and they stay in one, one location, two or three hours with he and his sketchbook and maybe some gouache. He, he goes and visits different parts, different areas of where they are. He might've gone to four locations while they were in the one. And he's collected memories of this place. Maybe not memories enough to frame and uh, sell, but he's taken the sketches, the memory, the photograph that he can then later work with if he wants to back in the studio. But it freed him up to travel lightly, to explore more of where he was. And I'm gonna show you some of these sketches that I've done since taking his workshop and um, at the end, I hope to include just kind of a uh, demo of how uh, I do some of the uh, continual line drawing and, and maybe you'll try it too. So join me on this celebration of embracing who you are, what you want to do, what makes, what brings you joy. The joy I get from my journals is the collection of memories. And like I've said in some of my other um, videos of all the art that I create, my journals are what my children want. So um, it's, a, it's a history of, of their mom and things that are important to her. So uh, make your own history. And I hope you uh, join me in uh, making mine. And if there's anything in this video that is helpful, please like and subscribe and comment on what it is that rang true with you. I really do like to hear your comments. And uh, it just uh, brightens my day when I see my channel grow. So <laughs> thank you for joining me in this journey. One of my goals recently was to be able to take a journal with me, sit down wherever I am, open it up and draw what's in front of me without being intimidated. And that's, that's a big, a big wish and if, and David Boyd Jr. has um, inspired me to try that even more. So I took, this is one of the journals that I'm considering taking or something similar to this uh, to Europe with me. It's, it's a bigger size than I normally work with. This is the size that I normally work with. Just to let you know, it didn't come with a enclosure. So I put a little piece of duct tape and a ponytail, I mean a headband, one of those elastic headbands you can buy. And it was, it was loose enough, long enough that it didn't pull. I also didn't like the dull matte finish. So I took some acrylic metallic paint and I dolled it up a bit. So now that I'm happy and you know, make your journals inviting. If for some reason they're not inviting, if there's something you don't like about it, if it's something you can change and change it. Oh, I also put uh, glued an envelope back here so I can put things there and I have an extra one just in case. But that's what I've done to help use this journal and make it appealing to me. But after I took uh, or saw his little, it, it was a mentoring session that he had that I was first uh, introduced to him. And uh, we were at the mill pond at Apalachicola and I saw this shrimp boat not far from where um, we had had a discussion and I went over with a stool sat down and I pulled out two pens one was a uniball eye uh, just black ink pen and another one I don't have the uniball with me and the other one was my 005 micron which is the teeny teeny tiny pen that I did back here so I started this drawing as a continual line drawing. I tried not to pick my pen up and tried to retract, you know, just 
as much as possible, continue in one line, and, and you, like I go up and come back. And then I ended up lifting it up at some point and not continuing the line, but it started off that way. And what's crazy about these shrimp boats, there's lines and things crisscross and go all sorts of ways. And just it being a mess is what it really was. It really was a mess. So when I can have a mess of lines and it kind of makes sense, that's okay. So after I completed the, the first part of the drawing, then I took the little bitty pen, and for the things that are in the distance, I wanted a lot lighter, a lot more delicate line. So I just indicated with very, very light squiggly lines what would be back there. And then I had some a limited palette of watercolors, and I put that in. So this took about 30 minutes. And man, I was excited. Okay, that's that's not bad. You know, and... and I'm not sure if I like it better with or without the, the color in it, but I think the color helped with the shadowing and the, and the depth of, of the boat and gave a little more in, information to the uh, surface that, or the place where I was. Sorry, got to cut that off. It's driving me crazy. Okay, then um, the next thing I did that was similar, oh, one in this notebook, this particular uh, one, I picked up the, de the day after that, no, it was the same day. It was the same day. Later, I was, as I was leaving, I drove to the end of the pier, and Miss Ella Sue, this boat, was at the end of the pier, and I'd never seen this boat there before. So I pulled up, parked my car, and just did a quick sketch, and um, 15 minutes at Mill Pond. And I'm happy with that. It's a real scratchy sketch. This one I did only with my uh, Micron pen. And the parts that were darker, I just went a little slower and stood the pin up straighter. So later on that week, on the well, actually the next day, because I dated on the 16th, we were um, at Carabell, Florida, for the quick paint. I did go there with the sole purpose of I'm going to sketch something before I leave. And the event was almost over. They they blow a horn after two hours, and the artists have to stop painting and then bring their paintings in to be be judged. And while all the other artists were working on that, I just found a quiet corner under a pavilion. And I looked out on the water and not far from me was this barge. I guess that's what you call it. It was something I didn't even know what everything on it was. And I thought, you know, that's, that's the perfect thing to try because I don't even understand what it is. I don't have, to, in my mind, I'm not labeling it. I'm looking at, well, that's sort of a triangle. That's a long kind of a rectangle. There's a, a, a taller one in front of it. So in this case, I did lift my pen up when I knew something else was there, but I started this in pen, pen only. When I start in pen only, it forces me to pay a little closer attention. I did start with a teeny tiny pen so that I could come back later with the heavier pen or heavier with that pen and make it darker. And then I colored in things that I wanted uh, a little more definition, but I didn't try to color in everything. And I'm happy with this because it tells a story of me for that day. My goal was to do a drawing of something that intimidated me. And that was actually why I did, well, I did that first drawing. When he asked why I chose, he asked me, so why did you choose that to draw when I had so many other things? And I said, well, it was a little intimidating. And if I can paint, if I can sit down and draw things that intimidate me, I'll get more comfortable with it and it will be less intimidating the more I do it. So I challenge you to do that because that's kind of what this was. I didn't know what things were. And when I don't have the opportunity to label them, call them by name, um, you know, I'm looking for an angle, a straight line, a curved line, um, a triangle if it connects. It's, it's just easier on your mind that way. And then this one was one of my favorite sketches of the week. It was when um, in the Forgotten Coast on Plein Air, the first Sunday, they have a service somewhere out near the water. This was on Riverfront, and um, a group of people uh, were attending, and then there was a, a pastor and some people from his church that were helping presenting the, the, the message. And then the artists were encouraged to be around and paint during the activity and I was way off but I could still hear the piano being played and um and and hear the message and and I was able to I just I just enjoyed that time 
or I could lightly sketch, just hint. It's some, like, this is a hint of another boat back there, but I didn't draw it. Hint at a crowd of people. Um, another artist, that was not more than a hint. Stuff on top of the boat. I don't have an, any idea what any of that is, and that's okay. And then this is uh, Crystal and Jeremy Sams, one of the artists uh, that taught at Plein Air South, but they're also he was also participating in, in the um, Forgotten Coast Plein Air as well. But just such a nice couple, God-fearing people. Just really enjoyed getting to know them. Let me see if there's any other. Oh, and then um, this is a house that I've loved looking at on the drive in Apalachicola. And this year when we arrived, the uh, azaleas were just on fire. And so again, this view is a bit intimidating, but I did not do this one plein air. All the others I've done plein air. Plein air is when you're on location, sitting, doing it on location. This I work from a photograph and, and I tried to take, if you take photographs of buildings, if you are across the street and take the picture rather than right on the corner of the street or right next to the house, you'll have less um, skewing of lines and they'll be a little more true to what they are. So uh, I took the picture up from this house across the street. And then I really liked, this was one thing I love about this tree is it's so loosely painted. It's just kind of scribbled in and then painted. It's a painted mess, but it I love the energy and the feeling that I get. And then I splattered some stuff. I learned that from Ruth to do more of that. So, um, But this, again, was inspired by David Boyd Jr. And I did this one, which I pulled up in the car. It was kind of a rainy day, windy. It was cold. And um, I spent very little time on it, maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most. I just wanted to capture the place. So when I look at this, I know exactly where that is. I know where I was headed and I know what kind of day it was. And that's, that's what I want to do is capture a place, an essence of a place as quickly as I can, not worrying about all the perfect lines. And then, okay, this was the last one that, um, that I can relate to, to, to that lesson that I learned from him. And it was the tin shed. It was just full of all sorts of antiques and collected junk, what I consider junk. Some people, you know, what I meant, one man's junk is another man's treasure. I mean, there were bicycles in the trees and in the grass. And I just wanted to get a hint of what was there and see how quickly I could do that. And I, again, I parked across the street from this one. So this one was done by lot, um, in lot on plein air. I did come back and adjust this fish to make it a little lighter. I made it a little too dark and I can do that because I also work with gouache and gouache, you can paint light over dark, but I wanted this fish to be brighter than uh, the background. So thank you, David Boyd Jr. for inspiring me to try things with line and to be okay when other the, all the other artists around me are painting in oil and doing these beautiful paintings that just collecting my memories and following your lead on that will be fine because I'm being me and I'm the only one that can be me and everybody has to find their own artist voice. And right now my artist voice is more in collecting memories in my journals than it is making fine art that you would hang on a wall. So I hope you're okay with that. And uh, I am, I don't know how long this will last and that's okay because I'm going to still be painting with oils occasionally because I do love it and pastels because they're so fun and immediate and colorful. So. I mentioned in the video that I was going to show you what I mean by continuous line drawing. It's just when you start a drawing in one place and you try not to lift your pencil up or your pen and you continue the, the whole thing until you're through. Occasionally you pick it up, but I'm going to try to do this one without picking up my uh, pen. I'm going to start on, I, I'm right handed, so it's easier for me to start on the left and move to the right. So I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go up. There's some rectangles come down a little longer than where I went up. And there's some more back behind there. You try to know the challenge is to draw things as you get to them. And when you start with what's in front first, it's a little easier to do that. 
If you start with what's in back, then you're going to kind of be overlapping what you might not want to overlap. And that's a, that's a sharp top of a Sharpie pen. And then I have a pen, a brush, an aqua brush here that um, has a lid on it. And then there's another pencil behind that, a mechanical pencil. I'm just drawing the little bits that I see. There's a pen that's in front of that as a round top. And what's kind of fun about this is you can take a really, this is a pipette, a really detailed um, painting, or not painting, but uh, image, and, um, and when you just break it down to one line at a time and uh, what you see, it, it's not quite as bad, and I'm not really looking to see what things are necessarily. I just tried to tell you what I was looking at so you could kind of maybe see what I'm seeing. Uh, the photo that I took probably won't be the exact directional uh, picture that I had, but it'll give you an idea. So this is where, hmm, do I go down to the cup? I mean, I can, I can stay, you know, touching the cup and just continue on by... Uh, just retracing lines that I've already retraced or that I've already drawn, and that's that's fine. Make my little skinny. I can go back and make it fatter. It's it's really not that big a deal. If I want to indicate the reflections on the side of the the cup, that that'll add interest. And then coming around this way, uh, add some interest up here. Now this is where it's like, oh, do I want to put black bear? Uh, no, probably not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just indicate some trees on here and that you're now well, I might do some sort of a bear image it's not I mean doesn't have to to indicate exactly what I'm looking at but that sort of sort of replicates a bear and then the foliage in the <laughs> or a dog or something it doesn't matter I mean this is ground trees you, at least it looks like something out there and you can just you know just indicate that there's some writing on here now I'm going to go back up and finish a couple of things in the back there's another pipette which is kind of clear so you kind of see through it not sure what oh, I think that's a spray bottle back there yeah and a um, upside down brush. There's a pencil sticking out back there that I see the tip of. And that's good enough. There you go. A uh, continuous line drawing. Quick sketch. It's really fun. Give it a try. I hope you have a wonderful day. If any of this has rung true with you or uh, you can relate, Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and uh, see you next week.